Thank you, Max, for uh, letting me, uh, inviting me to talk to your, your class and your students, your design students. So this is a very great opportunity. And I hope that, you know, this will, this will help the designers as they come out of school and go into the work field. Absolutely. So are we ready to get started? We're good? Yeah, let's go. Great. So again, my name is Peggy Lee. I'm currently a, the lead senior designer and project manager of the Play Studio at Cunningham Group in Culver City. Um, I deal mainly with, focus mainly on themed hospitality projects, so theme parks. And it really ranges from designing uh, the, the, the ride queuing to the exit retail, full bar and restaurants, and even the live show uh, spaces. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of my experiences in the design field that has become very valuable lessons to me in both design and in life. So before we get started, I wanted to pose a question to everybody um, and how you would complete the sentence, I want to design blank. So when you're filling in that question in your mind, are you, are you saying something that's very specific, like I want to design hotels? Or are you saying to yourself, I want to design an experience? And the topic of generalists and specialists is an ongoing debate and discussion. But today I wanted to discuss about how being flexible and adaptable to any opportunities that really come your way can be an added bonus to where you're trying to go, like your goals for your, for your career. So I'm gonna start my presentation. Let me just share my screen. So let's get started with flexibility. Flexibility, the ability to be easily modified and willing to change and compromise. So as designers and creative thinkers, the words change and compromise, it can be very scary and a bit daunting, but it's really, you know, we, we as creative thinkers, we think, you know, it's my design, it's my idea, it's me, this is who I am. But, and I get it, and we're very passionate people. We're very excited about a lot of different ideas that we have, but, you know, and we don't like to be told differently. And, you know, but flexibility isn't about changing you as a designer. It's really about being open to see how these different changes can really help you uh, for, you know, all the different experiences that you have and how that's gonna be something that strengthens you as a designer in your future projects. So you have a goal, but it's, and that's a great thing, but it's not about, you know, the path isn't just a straight line and it isn't a path that has already been taken by someone else. There's going to be experiences that come your way where it, it seems like it's taking you away from the goal that you have set for yourself, but it can always come back and, and um, help you in the long run. And so one of the experiences that I've had, you know, I've, the question that I posed to you, I've also asked myself that when I was coming out of school was, you know, and I had always answered it as I want to design hotels. Hotels was something that I wanted to design. And that's really all I wanted to focus on. And so I started my career in the hospitality world. I worked in boutique, boutique design firms. I've worked in larger firms. And that's where I, I started in the hospitality studio. And as, you know, the opportunities came my way, I wasn't closed off to different experiences. Um, going into a design field that you're not very comfortable with, that opens up so many opportunities for you. And one of the things for me was going from hospitality to retail design, to corporate, corporate uh, projects, which we'll, I'll show you in a little bit, as well as eventually coming into more of the themed hospitality, something that's very, very specific. And so the work that I do, I work both internationally and domestically on a lot of theme park projects with companies that I'm sure you've heard of every once in a while, such as Disney and Universal Studios. So adaptability, the quality of being able to adjust to new conditions. And the most obvious adapting that we've had currently uh, recently is what's going on with COVID-19, working from home, the uncertainty of everything. And these are unexpected conditions that can lead to unexpected uh, experience, experiences that can help you towards your goal. Some of these changes, if you allow it, it can actually help you see things in a very different way, um, just helping you see things in a different perspective that can, that can be an advantage for you 
compared to some of some other colleagues and experiences. Um, one of my experiences that I wanted to touch on was back in 2008, 2009, when we had a recession, um, I, you know, along with so many different people from different fields had gotten laid off and it took me about nine months of trying to get a job, you know, applying for design, uh, design jobs. And I think one of the things that I've experienced and I saw other people experiencing was that we're so focused on, you know, on getting jobs that is so specific and catered to our resume. We always say we wanna do a specific thing. We wanna have a specific job. We wanna have a specific salary. But what I found during that time was you really have to be able to adapt to the situation. And after about nine months of not being able to find um, a job, I found this uh, job posting at a furniture manufacturing company called Von Benz. And it wasn't a design job that I had hoped to go back to, but it was something that was still in the field. So I was basically working on the other side of what a designer had done and really catering for designers and helping with creating um, shop drawings and furniture that will go into hotels. And so even, even though it wasn't design, it was something that was very unexpected and actually did help me in the long run because even to this day when I speak with people and I tell people about my experiences as a designer and they see my resume being a project manager at a furniture manufacturing company actually is one of the key one of the first things that people ask me about because it's so different from just working as a designer and it's a little it, it sort of I, at first I thought that it veered me off of my path but it eventually when I did come back to working at a design firm it helped me understand how things are being built and it helped me be a stronger designer in order to be able to create spaces. Uh, so the next slide that I have are basically um, just three big lessons that I had learned as a designer and how that really helped me um, be more flexible and adaptable to the situations that I was currently in. So the first lesson is really about fail. Fail early and fail often in order to be able to prepare yourself for the future. And we hear all these quotes from so many successful people throughout the history of our, of humanity. And it really is something that was very important for me to be able to, to learn. Because failure isn't something that's going to put you down or anything. It's really about knowing that every time you create a sketch, it's, and it's, something that the designer or other designers or your client is not, does not like, it is gonna help you create a better sketch and a better idea. And eventually it's gonna get you to an approval and a construction and the end of the project where you can see it, you're successful and it's beautiful and, you get, and you're gonna be very proud of it. So we kind of left off with this project, the Honey, um, Honey HQ headquarters in downtown LA. And so this particular project was a corporate project that I had gotten to work on. Um, I was part of the design team and we had presented several times to the client and, you know, we really gave them a very good solid design for them and for their spaces for their, for their ever growing company. And I don't know if everyone is aware of who Honey or what Honey is, but it's an app. It's an online app that actually helps you with shopping. And so they wanted, their company was growing so quickly that they were able to get a building downtown LA in order to create a headquarters office for them. And so we had multiple different offices and we gave them a great design. And eventually after many presentations, the client did come back to us and say, you know, you know, this is great. This is really good work. Thank you so much. But it just isn't very exciting. It isn't very fun and new. And it really doesn't seem like there's anything different from any other companies, any other spaces. And so there will be times when clients will give you their opinion and their opinion isn't going to be an approval or they're not going to, sometimes they're not going to be happy. There will be times when they say, you know, this is a really um, bad design or if it, or that is just good, but not really great. And so those um, experiences, as much of it, as much as it may hurt you as a designer, or you, you know, your feelings are hurt and you feel like this is such a failure. It really isn't. It's going to make you work harder. It's going to make you um, continue and try new things and try to see things in different ways. And it's going to eventually create 
gets you to a point where the design is really um, it's really fun and innovative and the, and the client likes it. And this is actually something that actually did happen that way where, you know, there were many nights where I stayed up doing all these multiple sketches and trying to figure out what may be good and what may be, you know, acceptable. And eventually we, we honed in on the history of the building. Um, it used to be an old Coca-Cola distributing um, building. And so we kind of added that historical element and added some of the design elements into the design and the client eventually loved it and um, we went into construction it was beautifully built they've opened it they opened it right before COVID hit and so they actually haven't been able to go inside the building and work in it but it's there it's done it's beautiful and um, i've scattered in a couple of images of you know of the open of the actual space and so we were very very happy about it but it did take many times where we got some feedback that it really wasn't, you know, that it wasn't the best design and it really pushed us harder. And that's something that, you know, as young designers, I think it's really hard for, for young designers to really accept it and learn from it. But it is something that, you know, I think the faster you learn it, the better it will be for you um, emotionally, as well as, you know, whatever projects that you work on. So the next big lesson that I learned was patience. Um, patience is really about, you know, listening to your client. It's about knowing that it's going to take a while. It's not going to be something instantaneous. Um, like I said about the other, the previous project, you're not going to have that one, that first sketch, your sketch number one or your option A isn't going to be the one that's going to get approved. It isn't going to be something that's going to be so instantaneous. If it is, great happy for you and that's going to be wonderful it's going to be a great experience for you nonetheless but majority of the time as designers you know our first sketch isn't going to be the one that gets approved and so there's going to be times when you really have to listen to your clients um, a lot of the times you will have to actually teach them and guide them to see to know what a good functional design is you know what are their needs how can you help them tell their story you know it's really about listening to your clients and when you're designing and sketching things, you know, when you're listening to them, are you listening to respond or are you listening to actually contribute? So it's really, a, it's about the balancing that you have to have between yourself as a designer, as a strong creative thinker, as well as somebody who is a strong listener and really listens to what the client needs and what they want. So one of the experiences that I had was working on Marie and Enzo's and the Edison for Disney at the Disney Springs um, location. And this project, this project was definitely a very hard one. It was one of those projects where I had sketches, you know, sketch option A through Z and AA through ZZ and, you know, sketch A.5 and 10 and it goes on and on. And it took about two full years going through this whole process of talking with the client and not just, oops, sorry about that, and not just one client, one particular department, but multiple departments and trying to get approvals from everybody. It, it was insane. It was intense. And there was a long, many and long nights, but it, you know, eventually if you're patient and you really work through the designs and the design options with your client, your client will you know, they will eventually understand and really be able to get to the point of being able to approve for the space and getting, getting, going into construction and then going into opening and then being able to see guests coming into the space and really being able to see how you've created a space that people, other people, other guests from, you know, local to, to international will be able to come from all around the world to be able to experience that experience um, that, that you're trying to portray. And it really is about being able to, you know, persevere. It's not going to happen overnight, especially for people, you know, for, for the, the hospitality field, it's not going to be something that happens overnight. Um, I have to say my experiences with hospitality versus retail has been so different because of the timeline for hospitality, majority of the time for a project to work for, for it to go from start to finish, it's, it's going to be about like at least three to five years. Um, for retail, it was about six months, which was really great. And being able to have those two different experiences has really helped me, you know, 
understand that you know there are going to be some projects where it can happen in an instant and there are going to be other projects where it's going to take many more years and it's you as a designer to be patient to be able to work through the designs work through the problems and get solutions and really get that um, that wow factor within to the client for the design so the third lesson is really about creating that unique advantage for yourself you know if there's a quote, if you don't, if you do not change direction, you may end up where you're heading. It's almost like a manifest destiny thing. If you don't, if you don't change, if you don't accept change into your life, then you're just going to stay in that one spot, whether you like it or not. Um, and it's really about, you know, telling yourself to just, let's just do it. Try it. Try new things. Don't be afraid of, of doing something that you're uncomfortable with. Don't be afraid of, of, of um, showing a design or a sketch to your client or to colleagues, don't, don't be afraid that they're gonna say, oh no, I don't like it. It's really about you know, stepping up your game and really putting yourself out there in order to be able to stand out from the crowd. And one of the things that I had done personally, one of the things that I had done personally was really you know, taking myself outside of the comfort zones that I was before, where I was only focusing on hotels or in hospitality and only focusing on retail and, you know, really being able to stretch my fingers out into design um, outside of my comfort level. And, and, you know, I was in a company where I had been there for a very long time and I felt like, you know, it was safe. I knew my way around and I had pulled myself out of that comfort zone and was able to go to Cunningham and really start focusing on being able to design themed hospitality that ranged from so many different spaces. It's not just about creating guest rooms. It's not just about creating a retail space. It's about, you know, taking all of my experiences and being able to put it into um, a full themed space, all these, you know, a park and being able to take all those experiences and sort of creating a combination of um, a combination that really fits, fits the project. And I feel like that's something that, you know, a lot of people are afraid of stepping outside of their comfort zone. And I hope that you as designers will be able to sort of put yourself in a position and, and see what you can learn from it. Um, and I wanted to just sort of end with really showing what I do outside of the design world and how a lot of those experiences has sort of helped me in my out, you know, in my life outside of design and how you know being able to take a risk and doing things that i'm not very comfortable with doing things that i've never done before um, and how that's how, how i've sort of translated it into my personal life is by creating um i started a blog about a year and a half maybe two years ago where you know i really wanted to take some of my creative um creative juices i guess you could say and really putting it into my culinary skills and doing things that I've never really done. Um, trying new recipes, cooking with people that I, I've never cooked with before, and cooking with ingredients that I've never really have dealt with before. And so there's a lot of research that has to go into it. And I feel like that's something that, you know, as designers, you have that's that's very important that you have to do as a designer is do you have to do the research as well as being able to um, be willing to sort of do things that you're not that you're not very familiar with. And if you're not familiar with it, ask questions. Never be afraid to ask questions. There are so many resources out there, whether it's your fellow colleagues or mentors, you know, your, your professors. There's so much, um, so many resources out there for you that you should never feel, you know, scared or embarrassed to sort of put yourself out there because that experience that you have might be the perfect ingredient for your recipe or for your design. And that is something that I hope, you know, as designers, that that's something that you're willing to do and you're wanting to do so that it's, it, you become a very amazing standout designer and person. <laughs> so that is it for me on my presentation. I hope that, you know, Hope that some of these key things, some of my experiences, um, as you know, brief as this presentation was, I hope that this will encourage you to try new things and 
and I hope that my experiences will help you sort of go on your way with your design goals. So another thing that I've really been doing with my culinary, um, you know, projects, um, I started not only doing photography, but I also started, um, you know, creating little snippets of videos. A friend of mine who's a videographer and a photographer, he's sort of helped me start it all. And now I'm starting to do things on my own and really trying a medium that I've never really used before. Um, but I wanted to show and share a little bit. One of the videos that we had done, it was actually a, um, a meal that I had done at Max's house, home, and he was able to come into the kitchen with me. And it was really a collaboration. And I thought it was a very fun video that I wanted to share. So let me share that. So I think one of the things that I, I absolutely love um, sort of comparing the two between my culinary projects and my uh, design projects is that, you know, you really have to be enthusiastic and be willing to challenge yourself. And I think as, as creative people that we are, we always love that challenge and we want it both in, you know, both inside and outside of the design world. And it's been, it's been something that I've absolutely loved being able to sort of translate it between the two the two um, worlds in my life. So it's been, it's been really great. And that's it. Thank you guys. <laughs>